Now, how to care for migrants is once again proving to be a divisive issue across the European Union, with some member states accusing Belarus, which of course is not part of the European Union, of trying to flood them with people desperate to get into Europe. Uh, we've looked at the political issues in the past, but now let's hear from some of those who are making the dangerous journey. Our correspondent, Paul Adams, has been to meet one of those groups, and he sent this special report. Trapped in the forest on the EU's eastern frontier, a group of Syrians exhausted and afraid. We're absolutely shattered, the voice says. We've been walking since four in the morning. But how did they get here? Two weeks earlier, their journey starts with a tearful farewell in northern Iraq. And an optimistic selfie at the airport. We're leaving for Belarus, says Idris. We went to Erbil. The city is full of travel agents catering for would-be migrants. The first step, a visa. Murad isn't doing anything illegal, but he still doesn't want to be identified. If you have uh, passports, and we send it to the Belarus uh, tourism companies, and uh, they send us invitations. So when people um, come to you, they're not, you know they're not going to Belarus for a holiday. Of course. You know they're going to Europe. Yeah. Next, a smuggler. Juan is preparing to take a group through Belarus to Europe. If you are using a smuggler, it's going to cost you a lot at the borders. It will cost between nine and twelve thousand dollars. By now, Idris and his friends have reached the Belarusian capital, Minsk. The airport is jammed with people making the same journey. The group has been told to go to a hotel and wait for instructions. Are you worried about the journey? Of course, of course we are. We're crossing the border illegally. We don't know what will happen. We can't trust anyone, not even our smuggler. We're putting our fate in God's hands. In May, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, threatened to flood the EU with drugs and migrants. Revenge, it seems, for EU sanctions. Soon, thousands were crossing into Lithuania. We went there to see the border for ourselves. The guards here still catching dozens of migrants every day. Lithuania says Belarus is actively helping them to cross illegally. Wow, they're building a pine here. In some places, the border is little more than a gap in the forest. Now, we can see some Belarusian border guards coming right now. Until the crisis began, there was regular communication between the two sides. But after President Lukashenko threatened to allow migrants into the EU, all of that cooperation stopped and people started to flood across this border. And you can see just how easy it was. I need freedom. But thousands of migrants are now in detention, more than 700 here in a former prison. This, for some, is where hopes and dreams come to an abrupt end. They can apply for asylum, but most won't get it. After several days of silence, Idris and his friends are back in touch, heading into Poland. He couldn't film, but says Belarusian soldiers loaded 50 migrants onto a truck, took them to the border and showed them the way. Out of the forest and into the EU, in cars arranged by smugglers. With the help of Belarus and at the cost of $7,000 each, Idris and his friends have made it. They'll apply for asylum and see what happens next. Paul Adams, BBC News.